Hello and welcome to another Classic Golf Clubs video. Here are the time checks and the main headings for this video and if you want to skip ahead please feel free to do so. Hello Classic Golf Enthusiasts and welcome to another video. I've got a couple of treats for you today. I'm going to be playing with a iconic brand and the second one is I've got Shot Tracer downloaded so hopefully I'll be able to show you a few a uh, few flights of the balls so let's see how things go but before we do that we'll just uh, have a quick look at the clubs I'm playing today starting with the woods as always today we've got a real treat for you one of the most iconic names in British golf really if not one of the uh, major producers uh, they focused primarily on balls and didn't produce that many clubs but the name of Penfold is probably recognised around the world They've got various associations, particularly with the James Bond film Goldfinger. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later. The fine looking woods we can see here are the Penfold International model, which was introduced in 1977. So let's take a, a closer look at these. So there we have the driver. Uh, black insert with a four screw pattern, diamond pattern. There we can see the sole, custom made by Penfold, uh, four screws again and we've got a weight port there as well which would adjust the, the weight of the club. Nothing on the, the crown, just a plain brown finish and on the toe we've got the name International, the model name there. Looking at the face, at first glance it might look like a persimmon wood. We can't really see the laminations for a laminated block and this is because they they haven't emphasized the the grain on this one. Sometimes they were even stained to show the the different layers of grain but if I can bring this up closely to the camera and try and get it to focus there we go you can see the grain there quite clearly but it's all the same color so you have to look closely on this one to be able to tell it is a, it, it is a laminated model. Very nice wood, all the same. And the other two that came with this set are a three and a four. Both with aluminium sole plates and again both with the uh, weight port for adjusting the swing weight of the club. Shafts on these are a penfold um, model produced by True Temper. And this is the penfold dynamic shaft in a regular flex. These have been re-gripped. The original grips um, have been replaced at some stage previously and I think they were the um, Victory Green Grip which is one of my uh, least favourite types of grip. So I'll just put some cheap um, eBay grips on these. And here we have an advert for the clubs at the time of their release in 1977. It's interesting to note that the driver is described as being persimmon, so the laminate version that we show in here was probably a, a later alternative. And here we have the irons, as you can see, Penfold International again, so the matching set for the woods that we've just looked at. Uh, cast stainless steel, um, any Ben Hogan fans might recognise uh, a marked similarity to one of the Ben Hogan models that came out slightly before this one. I can't remember whether it's the producer or the director. Um, I'll bring up a, a picture of that so we can confirm that. Uh, but yeah, very nice irons with the, the heart logo there, picked out in red. Um, nice, quite a, a weighty sole on these. I've got a three, five and a seven here. And as, as, they, as they go down, uh, the sole gets thicker down to the uh, the pitching wedge which is the thickest of them all. So they've got quite a decent bit of weight on the bottom there. Uh, good clubs to be able to play. Nice ferrule and the sand iron as is often with a, a full set of clubs which you don't see very often these days. The sand iron has a slightly different uh, shape to the rest of the set so it hasn't got the, the, the uh, semi cavity back that the, the other clubs have got. It's just a plain, um, plain bladed top there good meaty sole well, I think this one's about 58 degrees which is quite a lot for those times whether that was what it originally came as I'm not sure 
when I got these, the lofts were a little bit all over the place. Um, I had them uh, re, uh, or s several of them, I got readjusted uh, to re put the, the lo lofts back to where they should be. Um, that was done by Christian McMillan at Retro Golf Workshop, a very good uh, centre for getting your vintage clubs restored. Uh, coming on to the grips, but the grips on these I do have the original um, penfold grips which have been replaced on the woods and we can see hopefully if can get, penfold heart and on the end cap again if I can get that in focus the name penfold and the penfold heart again the grips are actually in pretty poor condition and they ought to be replaced but I like the fact that they are the original grips and they do have that penfold uh, heart on them so I've, I've retained those it's a standard set for the start, the time, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, pitching wedge and sand iron. Um, that was generally how clubs were sold. Finishing with the putter, it would have been nice if I'd had a, a penfold putter, but I don't have a, a penfold of any description, uh, let alone a penfold international. But this is another um, very well known, if perhaps not iconic, British brand, and that's Bronte Golf, who were uh, set up in Leeds and produced a lot of um, clubs for beginners um, uh, including a, a very wide variety of putters and uh, chippers and sort of specialist clubs um, but they, they were in business for quite a long time and this is one of their models quite a striking design this model is called the silver knight if i can get that around so we can see that okay Get my hand there so we can focus it. Bronte Silver Knight, made in England. The factory was actually in Leeds. Uh, and it's a, a very nice weighted putter, double sided, uh, small uh, ferrule there, bit of fluting on the shaft. Uh, nice Union Jack uh, on the shaft. Can't read much else, it says Bronte. But this is obviously the time um, back in the 70s when buying British was being very much promoted so I'm back in Britain was a popular tagline at the time so there we are nice putter hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate it to, to good effect Penfold wasn't actually the company name they were called golf ball developments and were founded in 1927 in Birmingham as the name suggests, the company was primarily a golf ball producer and Penfold was the name of one of the balls that they produced. The figure shown was a papier-mâché model and the phrase, he played a Penfold, became known throughout golfing circles. The company was acquired by Colgate Palmolive in 1974, which might sound a little odd, but the president was a mad keen golfer. Increased overseas competition saw the company struggle and the receiver was appointed in 1982. A new company, Penfold Golf Limited, was formed in 1983. Pen Penfold didn't produce many golf clubs, the first probably appearing around the late 1930s or early 1940s. One of the most recognised associations for Penfold is in the James Bond film Goldfinger, where Bond proudly proclaims his ball to be a Penfold heart. In order to play the scene, the actor Sean Connery had to improve his golfing skills and had several lessons leading up to the role. And it's to my eternal credit that at no point during this video have I attempted to do a Sean Connery impression and you can all be very grateful for that fact. Before I start playing, here are the lofts for today's clubs. Okay, first attempt with the shot tracer. Nice clear sky, hopefully I've got it high enough. See that down, but it was a big slice, not the best hit. 
put that in the bunker. I won't be doing a shot trace on this one. Out via the bunker wall. A bit thin, probably in the bunker again. I put that one on the green, but then unfortunately, or fortunately, forgot to press record, so the ensuing three put wasn't recorded. Drive went 240, I've left myself 185, it's a front flag, and then hit 5 iron. the bottom groove see how far that one ran got better than I deserved there almost ran onto the green see what I can do with that Almost made par there, but that was a bogey after the lip out to add to the double bogey on the first hole. After quite a bit of waiting around, I decided to skip a few holes and find a, a bit of space on the course. Unfortunately, Shot Tracer failed to pick this one up. I was so thrilled with having chipped this one up onto the green to, to within two put range that I again forgot to press record. That was my best drive of the day and the only one that found the fairway. On 210, it's left me 173, using 5 iron again. Not quite the direction I wanted. That one, I think. I was rushing around a bit around the green on this hole, having wasted a bit of time trying to find my ball, as the group behind who I pushed in front of were getting close to me. So that's what I'm blaming the resulting triple bogey on, rather than my ineffectual short game. I 
confession to make there in a minute. The confession is that was actually my second tee shot. The first one was pushed right of the green, but I forgot to press record. In the interest of the video, I retook it. Whoops, a bit of a camera stability issue here. Let me just re-straighten things out with the edit feature. I was quite pleased with that chip as it might not show it on the picture but that's quite a, a downhill uh, little chip to the flag and the green sloped away after the hole and there we are I slotted that one in for my only par if you can call it that with a second tee shot of the round to summarize then two bogeys one double bogey, one triple bogey and one par. So not a great showing, but as I said, I was rushing around a little bit and I think I need to take more time and concentrate on the shots rather than on the actual filming of the, uh, the videos. I hope you found it interesting though and we'll return for the next one or even one of the previous ones. Thank you and see you next time.